we, we, they can get the pre-show as well. So uh, Tammy and I were just chatting. I think the first time we had you on or last time we had you on was like 2018 after a mega camp, I think. And so it's like, this is way overdue it's been uh, a little while. to get David on the show. So we're, we're thrilled to have you. No, always grateful for the opportunity. Love, uh, love talking about database. <laughs> yeah, just let's coaching give one of my agents on it, and uh, it's, uh, I, I get, I realize how passionate I get about us uh, taking care of our people. Yeah, it's well, uh, and when we start off, we're we're boy, that number you gave me, seventy-one to one. I can't wait to have that conversation because I, I think that after we get a little background, maybe we start off with that number because i think you know that's just a shake you into reality of possibility of what yeah, this it's thing staggering it's, it's funny how it's grown uh and yeah we can talk about the hockey stick effect of it but because mm. uh, i actually thought it would be lower this year our highest ever was 54 for 54 to 1 uh and so i was was actually taking it back i had to do i had to fill something out the other day for uh, sajik or jason abrams or somebody and it was uh when i saw that number i was like wow right like, just <laughs> staggering that's 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 living large. All right, we're going to get it started. So, hey, welcome everyone to uh, Nevering Referrals. We'll be uh, uh, we're going to kick off today with uh, an amazing interview with with David Huffaker out of Middle Tennessee, and uh, he'll tell us about all the markets that he works and where you can send referrals to uh, here in just a minute. And uh, you know, a little background on David. We had the pleasure uh, to have David on the show. Gosh, I guess it was. Uh, uh, 2018. And like I said, this one way overdue because you are just a, a plethora of perspective when it comes to the database. And uh, we, we really uh, you know, love what you do. But David, let's start off with tell them a little bit about uh, your background. I know you were like the, the fastest agent to 100 million in KW that I'm aware of. And um, Tell us just a yeah, little I used to be able to hold that flag. Uh, Steve, thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. I do believe that there's been a few uh, that have gotten there quicker lately. And so uh, we'll say, you know, top five or so. maybe. There you go. Be I awesome still here. love to be. Uh, what's that? As it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I, we had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fortune, right? A lot of uh, wind at our back, getting in the market at the right time, uh, you know, starting a team and all of that. So uh, I don't take credit for a whole lot, just being in the right place, right time with a bunch of amazing people. Uh, but yeah, my name is David Huffaker. Uh, I'm out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee, or just east of Nashville, a little town called Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Uh, we actually have five offices around Nashville. We have one uh, north in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, uh, in Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, actually in uh, 12 different markets around the country, seven different states, uh, could go through the whole list, or you can just visit our website at thehuffagroup.com to see our locations. Uh, expansion has been a big passion for ours for the past several years. Uh, really built on, uh, Steve, what you helped us learn through never-ending referrals of the database and how to leverage that and do that at a high level. Um, also, the OP of a couple of market centers, a few business centers around the Tennessee area. And of course, uh, most passionate about uh, raising three teenage boys. Uh, they absolutely eat you out of house and home. So you have to sell a lot of houses uh, when you do that. And then of course, my amazing wife that supports me and allows me to support her in our journey together uh, is, is generally what I'm passionate about, right? Uh, talk about funding the perfect life. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, those teenage, they're, they're all teenagers now or how old are the boys? Uh, one of them's 10, but he thinks he's a teenager. He thinks so he's 15, he might as well 13, be right? Yeah, 15, go. 13, and 10, but uh, the baby always uh, progresses faster, it appears. The, well, he's, he's like I said, he's riding the coattails of his of his brothers. Well, hey, yeah, I think you know, we probably go through five or seven gallons of milk a week. It's just, it's, it's just, <laughs> oh they just I heard someone say they're like ogres, right? They just get the box of cereal in the morning. And they're tired, <laughs> you know, they just don't talk to me and just, uh, you know, happy, you happy to watch them grow. Oh, uh, fun. Well, David, David, you know, we were communicating uh, a little bit before the show and you, you, you shared something that was, you know, that eye opening stat when, when even you were, you know, kind of analyzing your numbers and I'm just going to say the number 71 to one. And you tell us what that number is and some of that journey to, to that number. Sure. Yeah. So our return on investment with our database work is $71 for every $1 spent. And I, 
I was I was shocked. I had to look that number up the other day. Uh, I, I keep a lot of spreadsheets, and so I, I typically watch it. And it's hovered around uh, 50, 54 to one for for a few years. And so I was, you know, pleasantly surprised and excited. Uh, we knew it did a great job for us. Even at fifty four to one, it's still a phenomenal ROI. I mean, our typical, you know, Gary teaches us, you know, that minimum threshold needs to be a four to one uh, just to get a return on investment. If you're running, you know, you'll double your money if you're running at a 25% net profit margin uh, at a four to one. But our goal is always a 10 to one, right? A 10 to one return on investment is really what we're after and what we do. Uh, so a 54 to one or a 71 to one uh, is pretty staggering. I, I teach our database class a lot. And, and to me, always, it's like going to Vegas and knowing whether to bet on red or black. Um, it just really is that predictable of a business. And what made me fall in love, I mean, you know my story, right? I mean, I started out working for a lot of builders, doing a lot of open houses. I was the typical entrepreneur, like I would just out hustle anyone. Uh, and after a few years, we were having a ton of success, but I just envisioning doing that hustle, right? We, we break it down to 15% of the market is typically looking to make a move at any given time. 85% of the market is not. Uh, and so I was very heavy in the 15%, right? Looking for the now business. Um, but to think about doing that over the course of a career for 40 or 50 years, I looked up at all the successful agents in our market and, and what they had done is they had built a database and, and Tony DeCello explained it at that mega camp on, on stage, uh, so well that it made me back up and go, am I, am I fishing in the wrong pond? Right. And I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong. It's just, you know, where does the focus become? Right. What was that message you heard from Tony that was uh, kind of that that head slap moment? Yeah, I mean, we were at Mega Camp and he just him and Gary and him were on stage talking. And he just said, well, how would you feel if you woke up uh, January 1st and knew that you had 48 closings already in the pipeline for the year? And at the time, I just thought, like, man, I, that'd be awesome. And, and it just it, it just aligned so well with when I, I, I like to study successful people. Right. And so studying the successful agents in our area, they people knew their name, right? They had, they had sold the, the parents' house and the grandparents' house. And then as the kids got older, they had sold their house and they had just made this reputation of being the quote unquote realtor, right? Especially um, where I'm at. And I just looked at that and said, well, how did they do that, right? How do, I, how do I become that agent? And the challenge was that it took them 30, 35 years to do it. They, they had built it, again, entrepreneurially. Um, mm -hmm. They had just done it through being them, right? And word of mouth. And that was the you think back to the 80s and 90s, that was how real estate was done. Um, and so we just said, like, could we accelerate that? And so when I was studying them and Tony said that, and I just thought like, man, I, again, my boys were young at the time, uh, you know, I still have three boys. And so for me, the predictability of business takes so much of the stress away, right? I mean, having to provide or needing to provide and having the opportunity to provide. Um, yeah, the, the predictability of it was what really... That was, that was the part that I said, like, oh, like, that's running a business, right? So it was like a complete shift away from chasing to now attracting. And, you know, I guess might be a way to describe that. Is, is that a fair? Yeah, way? I always think of like, especially in building a team, uh, building a platform of something to provide to others was that that business is still there. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that business. And early on, for most of us in our career, we need that business, right? I mean, I always say baby needs shoes, right? Like, we have to go out and get it. Um, however, I think that one of the reasons we see such extreme turnover in our industry is that if that is your primary mode for several years, it's exhausting, right? And, and the income from that isn't so great that you're not willing to go look other places for, to, to try to do that. So, so I think that it's a natural progression of you go and deal with the, you know, we like our newer agents come onto the team and they don't have this data, but it takes us about seven months to really start seeing the fruits of that labor, right? So as we're expanding and building someone's database with them and helping them understand, like, as you partner with us, we're going to do all of this stuff to love on your people for you. Um, it's going to take about seven months before that to really catch and, and take off, right? And so during that, you still need the open houses. You still need the, you know, we do a lot of pay-per-click as well, right? SEM, we had a great, great program for that. So you still need, I mean, those people are still buying, right? We still want to help them. Um, as you grow and develop, at least within our organization, you start to become less dependent on the 15% and you start valuing the 85% more so that your business grows and blossoms. Well, the cool thing about that, I never set out to have a 50-person team. I should restate that. We have 28 agents. 
But as you grow your database, the rest of that business is still there. And so then that's what's allowed our expansion partners to go out and find buyer's experts or buyer's agents to bring them in to go like, hey, this 15% still exists. And if you'll focus on that and allow us to help you build a database. And so then they grow, right? Well, then all of a sudden they get to be senior agents and they turn around and go like, well, who else? Like, and so it's this really cool uh, kind of mushroom cloud of, of growth that happens organically and, and, and to me, very healthy to build a business on. Fantastic. So sure. tell, talk to us about DTD2. Where does DTD2 fit in the organization? How do you manage that with all these expansion partners and team, 28 agents? What, what's that look like? Yeah, so we actually have a couple of people in our organization to help with it, uh, primarily a database manager. And so every week uh, we let the team, you know, we remind them we have a rules of engagement that has uh, two letters of the last name so they know which, which week we're on. And we also actually inter introduced a, uh, I don't know how you would say that, but it's, uh, we basically text one letter of the last name each week. So we added to the calling two letters and then we created a list. So you would text someone, you know, six or seven weeks after you called them. So our agents are, are uh, encouraged to have an hour and a half a day of follow-up work uh, on their calendar. So really Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the follow-up is heavily focused on the DTD2s. Um, once they complete their DTD2s, they actually text our database manager and let her know that they're complete. And then she goes in and marks them off on a list. And then that report comes out once a week to kind of highlight who's completed their DTD2, DTD2s for the week and who hasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, we recently just implemented a, a program where if you haven't completed yours for the week, uh, we, we uh, give you more time by removing leads. We don't, we don't provide leads to those that don't do their DTD2 so that they now have some time to actually go out and get caught up on it. So. Mm -hmm. Well, there um, you go. <laughs> what's that? Well, there you go. I mean, just that's real, real accountability to it and making a, a vital part of the culture of the team. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, they're not bad about it, right? They, 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 you know, last week was spring break, right? So a lot of people are off by a week. And so we want to support them in growing their business. And we just know that that's going to deliver, especially in a market like this, it's really easy to get off focus, uh, you know, sales prices are so high and, and, and things are happening that it's maybe easy to not do the hard work sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, we just know that those relationships, it's, it's all complemented, right? And so our, our program has been to um, communicate with people in a, different ways, right? So phone, text, email, social media, in-person events, we're still doing quite a few of those. Um, and so that we can reach them in different forms, right? Depending upon how they like to be communicated with. You know, so what last time we spoke, uh, you shared with us the texting one letter, and we did steal that and add it to the DTD2 calendar. Thank you Excellent. very yeah. much, David Huffaker. And um, the what what's the text? So what works in a text communication? So what's that usually consist of? Yeah, so we actually, my team had asked for this, and we had talked about it probably for three years of actually creating a script each quarter um to to go out because a lot of it was go do your dtd2 calls and uh and that sounds great in theory some of us are very natural at that some of us are not and so we've actually gone back for the phone calls and created every quarter a uh, a script around it so we can say like look if you know the person really well and you're comfortable with it uh you know just wing it right do what you do best as a realtor uh, if you don't though here's a script and so we kind of structure the text along the same way to just follow up and say hey just checking in with you uh, you know, this week, this this last time we spoke, we were talking about our Huffaker's Hounds program, which is a animal welfare animal welfare organization. Steve, I know you and I share that uh, in common, uh, and so just want to make sure you have a link to that website and can understand that more. So again, it's just that touch base. If you think about the way that the database program is designed, uh, my marketing team probably kill me, but I don't, I'm not so I'm not so caught up in the message, right? If you go back and look at the research and the psychology behind it. I mean, I always say it's just, right? It's just consistency. It's just that it's that touch point over and over and over and over. The eight by eight is to gain mind share. Our 48 touches to retain the mind share. The psychology behind it, the marketing research shows that it's just me putting that name in front of you over and over and over again. So that when you think of real estate, you think of me and you can take a look at the Super Bowl ads, right? Mm -hmm. Doritos doesn't need to spend millions of dollars. They just don't. And yet they still do it to retain mind share. That's when no one else gets it. And that's the beauty of the program is that it's based in psychology and it's based on how people think. I don't need you to be unique. I don't need you to do anything special. I just need consistency over time. Yeah. And you knew I, psychology wise, you knew I hadn't had lunch yet 
and you're talking about Doritos and there you go. You make me hungry. Uh, right. <laughs> so, uh, well, hey, t- take us to, you know, last week with this group, we touched on eight by eight and, you know, I know that's something that you really, you know, grabbed hold of and put, put in place in your business to launch those relationships. Tell us what an eight by eight, an eight by eight looks like uh, in your business yeah. for new contact. Yeah. To, so to lead into that, I also want to, like, we went back, one of the things we really struggled with was the term database. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of, and then it's not as, I don't find it as common anymore, but years ago when we would ask people about their database, they would actually say a CRM name, right? So they would say command or boomtown or, or sync or something. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, no, no, that's, that's a, that's a CRM, right? That's a tool used to manage your database, but your database is actually humans, right? So we, we, we re, re, rephrased it to call it core database, right? So when we're talking to our teams, because the words we use matter so much, especially when you're trying to communicate across 50 people, so we basically say like, okay, let's identify a core database. And those consist of four different things, right? One is sphere, family and friends. Well, depending upon if you're from the area or not, um, you may have a huge sphere, you may not have a huge sphere, but I can't add to my sphere very quickly. Maybe somebody marries into the family, but ultimately I'm not, especially at my age, I'm not going out and meeting 20 new people a week, right? Uh, I kind of know who I know. So you have your sphere, which is kind of what your base building off of. Then you add to that your past clients. Well, again, depending on how long you've been in business, that may be a challenge. You may add one past client a month or not, right? You know what I'm saying? So again, not, a, not an easy section to grow. So those two kind of come naturally and should be what we're getting out of our cell phones and what we're doing when we close someone or when, when, when a transaction closes. The next two are how we build it quickly. So on our team, we, we, we coach to five a week. If you had five people a week and you work 48 weeks out of the year, you're going to add 240 people. Our conversion rate before MREA2 came out with the actual number was a 20 to one expectation. So if you add five people a week, you're basically adding a closing a month to your business. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. We That's help. Cool. We, we believe the 20 to one MREA2 is actually going to come out and say 16 to one. So I was pretty proud. We kind of just guessed at 20 to one. Um, it used to be obviously 12 to two in the original MREA. Uh, the 16 to one is what MREA2 says. Our top agent right now, she gets a nine to one return or conversion rate, right? Um, our, our, most of our agents, 9, 13, 16. So all that to say, how do we add five people a week? Well, you basically have two buckets to fish out of, right? We do the allied resources, which is the bold uh, you know, white pages exercise, if you will, right? A for attorney, B for baker, C for car mechanics, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't use that one a whole lot, to be honest with you. I think it's a great way if you wanted to. But the last one that we came up with, we coined the term database followers. If you think about it like a Twitter follower, right? It basically is someone that isn't a sphere, isn't a past client, um, but has agreed to allow for you to communicate with them systematically. And so we actually use a script called the three ask script. And, and, and ultimately what, what I'm looking for in that, the third ask is when you think of real estate, who do you trust? And you'd just be amazed at how many people say like, I don't know what that means first, but they say like nobody, right? They say, well, when you need something to do with real estate, who do you depend on? Um, and it's just... I'm, Four out of five people will say, well, nobody, nobody really stays in touch with me. I don't know. I don't have that person. And so I just say, like, great, can I have the right to earn that responsibility? Well, what does that mean? Well, can I stay in touch with you periodically about what's going on in the market so that if you ever did need something from a real estate agent, you'd have somebody that you could trust and depend on? Would that be okay with you? All right. So it's a very easy conversation, much easier than, hey, are you looking to move right now? Hey, who do you know from work or church that's looking to make a move? We still ask those questions, but it's just such an easier law that people go like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. So that's what leads us into people allowing us to do eight days with them. So again, if you can find five people a week to, to say like, yes, I, you can stay in touch with me periodically. And let's be honest, if you're lead generating the way that we're supposed to be, five people a week isn't too challenging, right? If we're circle prospecting, we're doing open houses, we're doing the things that we do anyways. So in that, we lead into the eight, right? So it's, for me, I always tease, like they don't realize it, but they just, they just agreed to let me brainwash them, right? Like they've just said like, yes, marketing wise, psychology wise, you can, you can stay in touch with me periodically about real estate. Awesome. I'm going to drop some information in the mail. So the first thing that goes out to handwritten thank you card, right? We put two business cards in there. Handwritten, hey, great to talk to you. You know, sorry, your team lost this weekend, blah, 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 whatever. Mail it out uh, so that they get it. Early on, I'd go to Walgreens and buy the 99 cent on clearance thank you cards. Like, again, I don't, I don't know overall that it really matters. Now we got fancy branded ones, but again, it's the touch point. They get it in the mail, they open it up. Hey, the Huffaker guy did what he said he was going to do. He actually sent me some information, right? 
So that's week one. An easy way to know if you've done five a week, put five thank you cards on the corner of your desk. If they're still there on Friday, you didn't get your five people, right? If you did, you're just writing your thank you card, dropping them in the mail. Second week comes around, we're sending them a text. Hey, it's David over at the Update Group. Just following up to make sure you got the thank you card I sent over. Again, could there be a more beautiful message? I'm sure there is, right? But for me, again, it's just a different medium. Hey, yeah, I got it. No, I didn't get it, whatever, right? Week three uh, comes by and we send out a, uh, a trifold brochure. And so any item of value will work, right? It's, we're coming up on the spring, right? Like send out some, rec, you know, who are the top five star reviews for lawn care in your area? Uh, print it off of Google and fold it up and put it in an envelope, right? Or, you know, go to a gutter cleaning service or a, a window washing service and say, hey, do you want to give me a 10% coupon to meld in my database, right? Any of the things there would be a great item of value. We have a beautiful trifold brochure. We take an insert. Each of our agents have their own insert because we want to make sure we brand our agent and not us. Um, and so always, just as a side note, always think of the Huffaker Group like State Farm. We're the powerful brand with the value and the platform behind our agent, but our agent is the reason that the consumer will hire them, right? And so we always want to support our agents in growing their businesses. Uh, so the trifold brochure goes out now. Week four, it's been a month. So now I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call them, right? Hey, it's David just following up with you. I want to make sure you get the information that we sent over. I told you I was going to stay in touch and I want to make sure I did that. So I always use that script because I, I always think about like my weatherman. I don't really trust him because he tells me it's going to rain and then it doesn't rain. The little things in life matter, right? And so I want to remind them like, hey, I said I was going to do something and I did it. Like, that's rare in this day and age, to be honest with you. I mean, how many people call you and say they're going to do something? How many people did you meet at Mega Camp that said they were going to follow up with you, right? We don't, we don't do it on purpose. It just happens, right? So on that phone call, I want to remind them I'm doing what I said I was going to do. And I really don't bring up real estate. How are you doing? What's going on? Still, I'm just building a relationship, right? Week five, we have a jumbo postcard that we send out. Just, hey, here's what we've done. Here's our team stats. Uh, here's some important information. Week six, another text message goes out. Week seven, we send a fridge magnet, something with a little bit more shelf life since it's the last item of value we're going to mail. And then week eight, we're going to do that phone call. Again, it's been two months. I've now called them twice in two months. I'm not being overly pushy. That conversation, I'm typically going to be, bring up real estate. Hey, just staying in touch. I'm going to call you from time to time. If you don't know anybody from work or church that may be looking to make a move that we could work with, right? So as we do that, right, we're building that. And immediately we do put them on our newsletter program. So they're also getting a print newsletter. They also get into our, uh, our, our web of follow-up. So they're also getting our e-newsletters. Uh, we actually, one of the cool tricks, one of the only things I've ever done that I didn't copy from someone else, and I'm sure someone else does it, was that we export our database uh, every month and upload it to Facebook as a custom audience. And then Facebook goes and looks for all those phone numbers and email addresses and then puts what we put up in front of them, right? So we'll do local market stats or Huffaker's Hounds or Huffaker's Heroes or one of our programs or whatever. So again, we're trying to hit them through different mediums. Not everybody's on Facebook, right? Not everybody responds to their texts. Not everybody looks at their direct mail. But surely through all of that, right, we're building a brand and an image with them. Well, and, and then here's the interesting thing I heard also on the eight by eight. It's send, 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 send. None of it was email. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. When's the last time you read one of those promotional emails? I mean, they even got their own little folder that you never go check, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, we send, again, just because different people are different. We do have a digital version of our newsletter that goes out via email. We send that to our entire CRM. Mm -hmm. But ultimately for us on our team, again, we hired a database manager. So thankfully for our agents, they send the handwritten thank you card. They send the text, which it's already typed and loaded in the system. It takes like two seconds and they make the phone calls. Everything else, our database manager, oh, it's week, you know, it's week seven for Betty Lou Bic Bic. I need to send this out for agent John, right? And she takes their insert and puts it in there. She puts their name on it, their business cards on it. So again, just if anybody's out there building teams, as much value as you can add for your people. Um, we have one of the highest retention rates uh, of, of team members uh, within our industry and within Keller Williams. Uh, I believe strongly in loving on our people and making sure that their business gets supported. We truly do want to build a platform that helps them grow to whatever they need to grow to. Well, and, and truly that you've built it so much around something that is really duplicatable, uh, predictable. Um, there's there's nobody that can take it away from them by change of algorithm or a change of policy, or they're going to now be a brokerage, 
you know, or whatever the case, this, this is quite contrarian to what some other mega teams focus on. And, well, and it's, I was having a conversation with one of my agents this morning and, and I'm like, this isn't like, we looked it up like this week's P and L for us. And so we just went into his database and went through it and, and, He's like, ah, just I got to get my stuff cleaned up. And I'm like, well, let's think about it, right? Rather than trying to clean up your entire database all at once before you get started, let's just clean up PL this week, right? Let's just go in and focus on those two letters. We went in there, there were 12 people in his database that were with PL. I'm like, how, how long truly would it take for you to do this? If you got an hour and a half a day for follow up, you know, in an hour, maybe, mm -hmm. right? an hour and a half. Okay, great. So let's go through and clean it up. Let's reach out to them. Let's use the script like, hey, shame on me for not staying in touch with you, but I want to do a better job. Start them on eight bytes if they, if they haven't been started on one in a long time. And then go to your cell phone and go through all the PLs in your phone and see who should be in there that's not in there, right? And let's begin to build it and gradually get better. I think a lot of times, and look, I, I had a, a CRM before I came to Keller Williams and, and I just left it. Like I was just like, it was so messy and so junky. I think there were like 12,000 records in it. And I just wanted to start over, right? And start fresh. I think we all get that way. But if you ask me now, we've got some, you know, 80, 90,000 records across all of our locations. You're never going to keep that clean, right? As long as you have a system in place and a process, go through and just chunk it down a little bit at a time. Take what you can do today and go out there. Again, the consistency over time is the secret, right? I mean, that's the most beautiful part about it is it's just we've, we, we, we strongly believe that, that like, I'm not unique. There's nothing that I personally am going to do that's going to trump what you can do or what someone else can do. And so if I can be consistent over time, or better yet, as a team owner, if I can create a way to be consistent over time for our agents with them having to do very little to it, then I just hold them accountable to making the phone calls and sending the text, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it produces a, an amazing result that gives you something really to build on. Wow. So, so eight by eight, uh, you know, getting the conversation started, uh, with the ask questions. And then you, you talked about you, you've got a, what, a 46 touch running for maintaining Mindshare. Tell us what that consists of. Give us a little perspective. Sure. Yeah, it varies in actually how many uh, touches it is. Uh, and I'll explain why in just a second. But again, we just want to be multifaceted in how we approach people. We want to, my intention is that they get that logo and that agent's name and that brand in front of them at least once a week through some medium. Right. And so, again, you're doing the DTD two calls, which is four phone calls a year. You've got the two texts. So there's six right through those communication pieces. We do direct mail. If you have told me five years ago I'd do direct mail, I would have said no way. Um, but I do believe as much email as everybody's getting. The challenge now is it's like every company's rich. And so they're <laughs> how much are you getting? You're getting more direct mail. I mean, how many guaranteed buyer letter offers do you get a week? Um, I, I know I get several. I don't know if it's just my area. Um, but again, as, as they open the mailbox and I always say, like, I have no fantasy that people are, you know, waiting with bated breath to open up the Huffaker group newsletter each week to, to read what's going on. But even if they're just taking it from the mailbox to the trash can, I go like mission accomplished. Cause I, I'm going to do that every week. So again, it's a print newsletter. Uh, it's an e-newsletter that goes out. We do, uh, two specific social media posts geared towards that group uh every every month um and then we do client events uh at least once a quarter right now we're do we've actually introduced community events as well to help grow the database so we do client events specifically for people that are in our core database and then we do community events uh to partner with people within the community to actually grow our core database right and so uh that's we actually hired an event planner that her only job is to focus on our events across the country uh, it's cool to simulcast them, right? And so I think we did uh, in February, I think we did seven daddy daughter dances uh, across the country. And so I thought that was really neat uh, to be able to kind of do them all the same weekend and to see you, when you see all the Facebook posts of like, you know, uh, Huntsville, Alabama and Atlanta, Georgia and Madison, Wisconsin and all of this happening all at the same time. It's really neat. Um, our client events, we kind of do those on steroids. So, you know, again, we're going to email them. We're going to phone call them. We're going to send them a text. So they're getting all these, that's not even a part of the 48 touch. Mm -hmm. um, but when we do an event, they're going to get all that communication as well. Um, uh, the reverse bolds have actually, I was a big skeptic of the reverse bold. I uh, was not a huge fan and my team really pushed for it and said, Hey, we heard about this and we want to do it. I'm like, ah. I'm like, all right. Right. That's, you know, they pretty much like bullied me into it. Um, and to be honest with you, we, we did it. The first time was last March. Uh, we gave away a Peloton 
anybody, man, you're going to, I was blown away. 752 referrals uh, and contacts of folks out of that, out of one pellet. I think we closed like 18 transactions within 90 days. So, a, you know, a, a, what was it, $2,500, $2,800 Peloton? Mm -hmm. Our average commissions, you know, over ten thousand, you know, over one hundred eighty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars in commissions. Um, I was like, yeah, I told you guys we should have done this, right? <laughs> like, it was, uh, it was beautiful, and so we actually got about eight hundred and fifty registers uh, in the summer series giveaway that we did, and so that's been really cool to do, um, and, and very cost. Of, we we do a callathon on a Friday with our entire team. We skip a team meeting, and I order pizzas and and have drinks brought in and all that. Uh, and so really cool to do that. Uh, and so then the last thing uh, was, uh, oh, the reason that it changes is that we actually do, um, so I think most CRMs allow you to do this, right? But we go down for every record, we go and we figure out where they live and we draw a polygon around their, their neighborhood, right? And we have the system set up to email them anytime something comes on the market, goes pending or closes in their community. And that's been one of the best things, right? It's very hyper local. It doesn't go out every day. So like, you know, if you get on the e-alert and you get the same email every day um, because they're just sending you everything that just hit the market, this only sends them information of something that's so, you know, I think about when I leave my, when I leave my house and I drive down the street and I see a real estate sign in the yard after kicking myself for not being the listing agent, I go like, I ah, wonder how much that is, right? Because it affects my property value. Um, and, and so I'm always really interested in what's going on in my community. And so that's really, you know, you'll walk to, I'll, I'll be at the baseball fields or in the grocery stores and someone will give me, hey, you know, can't, thanks for sending me that house the other day. I can't believe they're listing it for that much, blah, blah, blah. These the same script all the time, right? My script for that is, I know, right? Like it works all the time. You can be anywhere you are and just say, I know, right? And, uh, and like, yeah, right. Do you see the bathroom and that hideous wallpaper and whatever? And like, yeah, I know, right? Like, it's crazy. Um, so, but it, it feels very unique to them, right? It feels hyper-local and it's a way again, to leverage technology and systems to stay in touch with them. And, and I don't mean, to, I don't want to be ingenuine. I, I, I know most of these people and get to interact with them, uh, frequently, but again, we're using technology as much as possible because you just can't stay in touch with 240 or 360 or 480 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one thing, I, the, the feedback I get sometimes is, yeah, but I'm, I'm, you know, and it's a little bit offensive, but it's like, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm very relationship based. I'm like, well, I'm relationship based too. The, the question becomes like, if I put a reminder on my calendar every Thursday to call my mom and tell her I love her, is does that make me non-relational? Does my mother appreciate that I did it? If I had a text message set up to go out to her, you see what I'm saying? Like, what is the experience for her? I think when we say sometimes like I'm relationship based, we're talking about how we feel about it. But look at it, how the consumer feels about it, how they, they, again, we're business owners. And so it's about building a brand and building a relation, a business relationship with them. Um, and so I think that by being systematic about it is actually being better to your consumer. It shows that you care more about them and are willing to take those extra steps to stay in touch with them because we all have the best intentions, right? It's a Absolutely. great way to look at it. So Tammy, jump in here. I mean, what, what are you hearing here? What else we, we need to ask David that we haven't asked him yet? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, everybody's like, I'm going to go back and watch this all over again, David. So thank you. I think there's a lot here. Uh, first of all, someone asked for the 3S script, if you could share that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I can give it to you now. Also, I teach this class once a month, uh, our database class for our agents, but it's always open to anyone. Uh, you can go to 6Ls.com. It's our coaching academy and, and find a link, uh, S-I-X-E-L-L-S.com. Uh, I'm sorry, 6Ls Academy. S I X E L L S academy.com and get a link to that. I believe the next time we're teaching it's on March 25th, if anybody wants to join us. Uh, but the three S script, essentially you, you layer it with rapport, right? Of course, we're not just going to pepper them with three questions, but the first question is, you know, especially like assume you're circle prospecting, right? And, hey, we're doing an open house up the street. Just calling to say hello. Uh, a lot of people in the area, uh, you know, may want to stop by the open house. Typically, we're going to have more offers on this home than just one. And so if I were able to bring you an extra contract or an easy contract, would you consider selling your home, right? So the first ask is, would you sell your house? Excellent. I know I just uh, caught you off guard. So blah, blah, blah. What do you love about the neighborhood? Again, building rapport. Hey, by the way, we find that a lot of people know people from work or church that might want to live in their neighborhood or they may want to choose their neighbor. Do you happen to have any friends that may want to move into your community? Do you know anybody that's looking to make a move, right? 
So again, the second ask is, who do you know that's looking to make a move, right? I always say those two questions are really your 15%, right? We're fishing in that 15% pond. Um, and then again, great, appreciate you taking time to chat with me. Uh, always a pleasure to get to know some of the neighbors in the neighborhood. Hey, before I go, could I ask, uh, when you think of real estate, who do you trust? And most of the time they'll say like, uh, what does that mean? Like, well, do you have anybody that stays in touch with you periodically about what's going on in the market? No, I don't have that person. Or if they say my mom, I go, okay, great. Right, it's good to know as well. Uh, but most of them are like, no, I don't have that. Awesome, I'd love to stay in touch with you periodically about what's going on. Could I drop you some information in the mail? Yep, awesome, great. I'm gonna follow up with you periodically. Uh, would love the right to earn that responsibility and be that realtor that you think of when you need real estate. Is there anything I could be doing for you right now? Great, yada, 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 right? And so again, as you're just having that conversation with people, two questions for the 15%, one for the 85%. Does that, does that make sense? Does that help? Yeah. They get the contact information and right into launching the relationship. Yeah. We're calling them have their phone number. So they usually have a piece. We always say like an A record has, uh, you know, phone, email, uh, home address is, is really important for us. And then if we can, social media profiles. Hmm. Perfect. Uh, David, what, you know, it's been a while since we've visited with you. What, what have we have, haven't asked you about what you've learned in the last couple of years about succeeding in this space? And, and if there were a couple of just core lessons you would kind of share with us and wrapping up, what, what would you want to share? Yeah. I mean, I guess for me, falling in love with time blocking and having a schedule for success. I mean, we all have the same number of hours in the day. Uh, you know, I look at my schedule as a recipe to become a, you know, a multimillionaire. And as long as I do those activities, the, I know that the results will come. They didn't get all these books written about it. And, and, you know, again, the millionaire real estate agent, eight by eight, 36 touches. I mean, all of this works. And so being consistent in the activities, I think super important. Um, and, and, you know, again, ultimately being on the journey of, as I've gotten older and as we've built a company, it's, uh, it really has been about how do we wake up each day and enrich the lives of these agents that we've been so blessed to be a part of. Um, I can build a database and work it. I believe strongly in succeeding through others. My passion became in finding people who want to be successful and pouring into them. I always say our team we probably wait, do way too much for our agent. They probably would rather us back off a little bit, but uh, I always say like they hired us. They got into business with us to help them with systems, models, coaching, accountability, and knowledge. We call it smack talk when we, when we coach, so systems, models, <clears throat> um, accountability, coaching, and knowledge is the conversation that we're going to have. And, uh, and so, again, the opportunity to pour into others, I think that if you really want to grow a big business or grow a big world, uh, look for opportunities to enrich others. And, and I know it's said all the time, but your life gets bigger as a byproduct of it. It's so cool. I got a new acronym. I got smack. I know. Okay. I'm, writing, I'm writing it down, David. I'm like, well, that's really good. Yeah, hey, J- Janet's got her hand up. Let me see if what Janet might want to share here. So, Janet, I've got you uh, enabled to talk. Did you have a question for David? I think she's in David's market center. Hey, David. Hi, Janet. You're, I did not have my hands up, to be honest. That They did that to me, okay? Just so you know. <laughs> it's a high five. I get it. Uh, <laughs> I, I have taken a, a dozen notes. I've got some ideas for my uh, VA to put on the eight by eight that I'm working on. And uh, thank you for encouraging me to keep on keeping on. Absolutely. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Love you, David. <laughs> we, we, we nailed her with that hand. I tell you, somebody, well, that was a high five. So there you go. Um, anybody else have a question for David before we turn him back to changing the, the lives of, of his agents? David, Ozzy, Ozzy would like to know what what turned you off about the bold, the reverse bold 100 rather in the beginning. I just saw so many teams doing it when uh, when COVID first hit, and uh, I don't know, it just whatever it was at the time. Again, I don't, I don't, I'm kind of weird about like. Again, I want consistency over time, so I guess I saw it as like let's give a gift to get business, um, and probably didn't see it for the bigger picture of. Uh, it, it, it opened up the door for opportunities to have conversations and relationships and to build our database and build the brand. Uh, I kind of saw it as like a, I'll give you something if you'll hire me. And I didn't love that feeling about it. Um, so I'm glad my team really pushed me to do it. Um, I don't ever just want to write a check for business. That's not the point. Um, so, but it, again, I'm typically wrong. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised at the, at the results. 
Well, David, well, thank, thank you for pouring into our folks today. This has been tremendous. And uh, uh, again, guys, if, if you've got referrals for Middle Tennessee, uh, give, us, give us your other locations there again, David. Yeah, so anywhere in Tennessee, Kentucky, Southern Indiana, Cincinnati, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I think that covers Raleigh, North Carolina. I think that covers most of them. Hey, he might even get that Louisville referral. You might even get some Kentucky Derby tickets out of that. That's deal. right. That's right. Yeah. Or I would say the bigger ask, uh, if anybody has any opportunities or is looking for a partner uh, to expand with or a platform with which to build on, we'd love conversations about how we can enrich other people's businesses. Uh, we've found it to be a real win-win with agents around the country. All right. Well, David, thank you so much. And guys, we're going to, we're going to shift gears and head over to session six and David, thank you. We really appreciate uh, all that you had to share with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me guys. Take care. Thanks, David. Okay. All right. Do you want to stop the recording and then start again? Yeah, I'll stop the recording. Then we'll go to session six. Oops. You're still there. <laughs>